friends, welcome to the new channel. We're gonna do a real quick video today for uh, beginners that have never even tried to make a bath bomb before. We're just gonna throw a real quick video out there and we will progress with other things. We're not just gonna start from ground zero and work our way up, but we will be sprinkling in lots of beginner tips tricks and helpful information along the way. So in today's video, this is for people who have never even tried to make a bath bomb before. So real quick, the chemistry of a bath bomb, okay? So the primary mechanism for the fizzing is an acid-based reaction. So there's a very weak carbonate base, which is your baking soda, and a weak acid, which is your citric acid. So baking soda on its own will not fizz. Let's try that out. This is just some distilled water. I always decant it. It's easier for me than lugging around that big, huge gallon. Okay, like I said, baking soda on its own will not fizz. Nothing. No fizzing. Citric acid on its own will not fizz. Again, nothing. When you combine them together, I've got the baking soda and the citric acid in here together. Then we start that fizzing action. Your standard ratio for a bath bomb is your baking soda two parts and your citric acid is one part. That is your standard ratio. I'm gonna be giving you guys a recipe. This is just a very, very, very basic recipe. This is not the recipe that I use to sell my bath bombs, um, but we'll get there eventually. So as you can see, when the baking soda is dry and the citric acid is dry, they can't react. But as soon as it touches the water, the acid and the base react and it releases carbon dioxide, which is a gas that creates your fizzing. As we can see here, science, ain't it cool? So the fizzing reaction of the citric acid is actually a neutralizing reaction because baking soda has a high pH of around nine and citric acid has a low pH of around two. But when you combine the two, they form a mixture that has an intermediate pH of around seven. Um, so I'm gonna give you guys a basic uh, bath bomb recipe right now. Let's put all of our components back together here. Like I said, our basic, basic components are your baking soda and your citric acid, two to one, right? But we also need, need other things. We need something that's going to make our bath bombs a little bit more hard, and that's where your cornstarch comes into play. This is also a stabilizer, so it's gonna slow down the rate in which your bath bomb fizzes to make it last longer. So there's that. We also need a moisturizer, because what's the point? Yes, it's fun to have a bath bomb in the tub and let it spin and fizz and do all of its things, and that's okay, but don't we want it to moisturize our skin too? That's where our avocado oil comes into play. Okay, so we've got that. Now we need an emulsifier because if you put that oil in your bath bomb, put the bath bomb in your tub of water, what's gonna happen? All that oil is going to float on the top of your water, leaving like a film, which is going to attach to your skin and just stay there. That's an uncomfortable and unpleasant experience. So we need an emulsifier so that our oil mixes in uh, with the water. So we're gonna need some polysorbate. Now, do you want your bath bomb to be fragranced? Of course you do. So we're gonna use some fragrance. Today we're just going to do coconut from Brambleberry and we're going to need our binder. Whatever you choose to have as your binder, this is just water again, by the way. Um, so you can use either witch hazel or you can use rubbing alcohol or you can use water or you can use any combination of those things. For the purposes of today's video, I'm using a combination of the witch hazel and the alcohol because I feel that that works the best for me. Do however you'd like to do, try it out, experiment and see what works for you. Water is going to make your bath bombs pretty hard, okay? But you have to be careful with that too depending on your climate and your environment and the humidity levels and so forth, they can also dry your bomb out really, really quickly and make them crack. So just be mindful of that. So let's get these out of the way. Okay, now that I've gotten all of that out of the way and cleaned up a little bit over here, I've gone ahead and I've already pre-mixed everything that we're going to need. I'm gonna give you the recipe now. So we have baking soda at 60%. 
cornstarch at 6%, okay? And that's all that's in here, our baking soda and our cornstarch. What we're going to add last is our citric acid, and that's gonna be at 30%. Now I've already combined all of my liquid ingredients in this little container here, so we've got our avocado oil at 1%, our polysorbate 80 at 0.5%, our fragrance, which we're doing coconut today, is 1.5%, and our binder, meaning your water or your alcohol or your witch hazel or any combination of those, is at 1%, okay? So we're gonna start off by taking our baking soda and our cornstarch, and we're going to add our liquid first thing. And get that all mixed together. And we're not going to color these bombs today again this is an extreme beginning video for those that have never even made bath bombs before so we're just going to keep things really really simple all right we've got our liquid in here take your whisk and just start mixing that all together we're going to get in here with our hands in just a moment like i said this is just an extreme basic recipe I've not really added any hardeners like clays or cream of tartar. I have not added any butters. I have not added any foaming uh, bubblers, any surfactants in the form of powder, such as your SLSA or your SCI. I've not added any of that stuff. I'm just trying to keep this as basic as basic can be. All right, we've got all this combined pretty well now. All right. Off to the side, I have a spray bottle also of alcohol, and we're gonna use that as we go if necessary to make our mix a little bit wetter. If it seems too dry, dry to the point where we're not gonna be able to mold it. It won't stay together. So right now we're looking okay. The very last thing you do is you put your citric acid in. The reason why we do that is because we don't want this to react, right? Remember when we said that we have a liquid involved with the baking soda and the citric acid, by themselves, they're not going to react. Put them together, add some uh, liquid in the form of water or even your alcohols have water in it, your witch hazel has water in it, it's going to start reacting. So if we had mixed this first, then added our liquid, it would start expanding and fizzing and activating on this, and we don't want that. So the very last thing you wanna do is add your citric acid. And then just mix again. Get in there with both hands, have fun. Bath bombs are fun, y'all. You can make them in so many different, really cool shapes and sizes and so forth. Today, we are only going to be making spheres. I'm gonna show you three different types of spheres. I'm not gonna get into the 3D bath bomb molds yet, because again, this is, this is extreme beginning, right? For people who've never even made a bath bomb before. Messy, messy, it happens. All right, now we wanna test this out, right? We wanna see if this is going to hold together enough to be able to mold. I could tell by looking at it that it's not going to, but let's just see anyways. Let's take some, squeeze it. Does it hold together? Yeah, it does. Drop it and see if it, it falls apart. It is kind of holding together, but for my liking, I'm gonna make this a little bit wetter. That's when I'm gonna put a couple of spritzes of my alcohol. You can have water in your spritzer, you can have your witch hazel, whatever you prefer as your binder, okay? A couple of spritzes, mix it in. You don't wanna go crazy. You don't want your mix to be saturated. All right, I think that's actually going to do it. All right, let's take one of our molds and try. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take an aluminum mold, okay? You could get these everywhere. You can get these at Hobby Lobby, at Michael's, at Joann's. They're just two halves. They're made out of aluminum, a round sphere. They're two halves. So 
So you basically just wanna take your two halves, you're gonna like do a scooping motion down inside of your bowl and get as much as you can and squeeze, okay? So let's do that. Let's get as much as we can in there and squeeze. You don't wanna twist your molds, you guys, because that's creating too much friction. Um, and then your bomb could split in half. All right, so squeeze, 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 and then just kind of rub away all of the excess with your fingers around this, this edge here. But try to squeeze as much as you can. Now we want to take a spoon on the top of this and want to give some taps just to kind of loosen it up a little bit. Turn it over and do the same thing. You don't have to go nutso. You don't have to bang the bejeez out of it. And then just take your fingers and try to lift straight up on this mold. If you need to kind of wiggle your finger in there a little bit just to give it a little bit of a oomph, a little bit of a push there. Okay, so you take that off, put it in your hand and turn it over and take off that bottom piece. Now, if you like a Saturn ring, cool. If you don't, just rub it off. Take your finger gently and go all the way around and rub it off. Okay, so there's a round sphere bath bomb made with an aluminum mold. Let's put this over here to dry. All right, we got enough in here. We can do, let's try to do this big plastic one. It's the only plastic one that I have like this with the round spheres and it's gigantic. I don't use these, but I kind of try to keep them here just in case, like for, for instance, for videos like this. All right, so put some down in the bottom, but don't pack it, you guys. Put some in, slightly pack it, right? We don't want our bombs to be so heavy that they're never gonna come up for air ever again. Put some in the other half, lightly pack, lightly pack. Now, what I like to do is kind of put a little bit of a, what I call the glue in the middle, right? After you have put some in one half, put some in the other half, lightly pack it down, then whatever other mix that you have, kind of sprinkle it up on the top of one of your halves. Think of it as like you're putting some type of a cream in the middle of cookies when you're baking and you're gonna put those two halves together and the cream is gonna hold it together. Let me turn this around this way. All right, so we've got the one half, we've got our other half. We're gonna put them together. Try to line them up if you can. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> that came right out of there, which is good. <laughs> All right, squeeze. Put them together and squeeze. Again, we're not going to be twisting, but just squeeze them together. Now, you don't want to crack the plastic ones with your spoon like we just did with the aluminum. You don't want to do that with the plastic because you will crack it, <laughs> as you can see. But hang on, let me squeeze this a little bit better. All right, so we're gonna give it a couple of taps on our table. And turn it over and do the same thing. All right, now we're gonna try to lift straight up and off with this top uh, outer shell here. Okay, turn it over and gently lift this top off or the bottom, however you wanna look at it. Now this is a mammoth size bath bomb. We wouldn't make a bath bomb really this size, right? That's humongous. It's gonna take forever to <laughs> dissolve in your tub. But I'm just showing you guys just a couple of the different ways that you can mold as a beginner. So we've gone over aluminum molds. We've gone over the plastic molds. I'm gonna go ahead and, and break that up again because I'm, I'm not gonna be able to do anything with a mold, or I'm, I'm sorry, with a bath bomb that size. All right, and so lastly, we're going to take um, sphere molds, and these are stainless steel. Hold on, let me get these apart. Sometimes they stick. Okay, so these are stainless steel. Same thing. It's a round sphere. And we're going to do the same thing as we did with the aluminum. 
if you don't want to do that and that's too hard for you, do what we just did with the plastic ones, okay? Put some in there and just gently push it down. Put some in your next half. Gently push down. All right, now we're gonna keep holding on to this half and we're going to add some of our middle glue, okay? Again, use the scenario of like when you're baking and you're gonna put that filling in, in between to keep your two parts of your cookies together. All right, so put the top half on the bottom half and squeeze. If you have to put this down on your table to squeeze a little bit, you can do that. All right, and then just kind of rub away all that excess that you have. And these ones we can bang with a spoon. The only ones you can't are the plastic because you'll crack them. Turn it over, do the same thing. All right, now we're gonna lift straight up and off with this top half. All right, turn it over. Do the same thing. Don't try to force it, you guys, because there's there's sometimes there's suction that's created. All right, there we go. Okay, so there's another round sphere bath bomb. Okay, we have a little bit left. I'll do something with that in a second. I hope this has been helpful for you guys. Again, this is for beginners that have never even made a bath bomb before. I'm gonna go over the recipe one more time just so you guys have it. Very, very basic. You can get all of these ingredients in your grocery store except for the polysorbate 80. That, you can just grab that up on Amazon, no big deal. Baking soda, 60%. Cornstarch, 6%. Avocado oil. Or you could use coconut oil if you want to. I prefer avocado oil. It's wonderful for your skin. 1% on the avocado oil. Polysorbate 80, 0.5%. Your fragrance, 1.5%. Your binder of choice, whether it's alcohol, witch hazel, or water, or any combination of those, 1%. And then your citric acid is at 30%. We didn't get into colorants today. We're not going to. We'll save that for another time. It's a little bit more of an advanced um, situation as far as if you are selling, because you need to have batch certified colorants if you are selling. If you're just making this for yourself, do whatever you'd like. Okay, you guys, that is going to do it for today and the first real video that I didn't borrow from our main channel. <laughs> I had to get something up there, you guys, you know? Anyways, this will help to not clog up our main channel, which is The Soap Chef. So if you guys enjoyed this video and found it help, helpful, I invite you to please give it a thumbs up. So do all the things, share, comment, please subscribe, and uh, I would appreciate that so much. I'd be forever grateful to all of y'all. So that is going to do it for this episode. Until we meet again, be kind.